name is Rachel haynes Wesson, and I'm a lecturer in blended learning at Deakin University in the Faculty of Science, Engineering and Built Environment. Today I'd like to show you a small introduction on a blended learning framework that has been designed for the faculty um, based for STEM education. It's been co-developed based on what is already occurring in the faculty regarding practice around blended learning and some of the key areas that we would like to improve on. Once I've spoken to a lot of academics in the faculty, it became quite um, evident that there was two competing forces occurring um, for our faculty. Uh, the whole faculty was going under a Deakin University-wide course, course evidence, sorry, course enhancement process, alongside still having to keep up their research output in their discipline area. So as you can see from this framework here, I've divided it into two sections. One is course design, because that's what's occurring in the faculty and normally occurs anyway and this is to do with constructive alignment as well as creating and you know engaging assessments for students and enhancing the curricula. Then on the other spectrum we also have teaching academics who also need to have quite a high and extensive research output in their discipline area so sometimes these are competing forces so that's why I've put these as important um, sections in the whole process of a blended learning framework for the faculty. What's really important is that when, we, when I'm talking to academics and we're talking either about enhancing their courses or their units and they, wanted to, and they want to use a blended learning approach, we need to make sure, if, especially if at a unit level, that they're considering the course as a whole, that they're looking at the course learning outcomes as well as their unit learning outcomes and how they align and where their particular unit sits. Is it a first year, second or third year unit, undergraduate or postgraduate? And also thinking about not only the horizontal constructive alignment, but also the vertical. And an interesting aspect to also ask unit chairs when they're working with their units or courses to create a blended learning framework is what kind of students do they have? What is their cohort characteristics? And just to keep this in mind, um, as well as what kind of assessments are they wanting to enhance and develop in a blended learning process. Then we go around the circular motion of the blended learning framework and we need at Deakin we use Cloud Deakin in, uh, which is a learning management system um, known as Brightspace and we already have a minimum standards in this area so what that means is are the are the unit guides in the right place? Is the information for plagiarism in the right place? Is the layout of the unit design structured appropriately? And what kind of areas can we improve in this area, in, this, in that particular unit site in the cloud? Another area that we look at in the blended learning model is the academics teaching skills and their own identity and how this can enhance their blended learning approach to the unit. Um, some academics uh, are, are right into you know, interactive learning or, or problem-based learning or project-based learning. Uh, some academics are more concentrated on their content um, because that's important to that discipline and it really depends on the assessments that they're going to assess their students on and that aligns also with what is the academics teaching skills in that area. Another area we look at in the blended learning model is specific student learning needs and outcomes and how this will affect their unit as in to achieve the unit learning outcomes and what kind of assessments and help and support they need around that. Then in the next section we look at how to plan this, how do, how do we go about enhancing a particular unit or course uh, with using the blended learning framework um, and this is where the planning takes place. And there are three areas that we like to focus on for the Faculty of um, Science, Engineering and Built Environment. The first one is um, putting the learning experiences into the cloud as well as into face-to-face -face areas. Um, and this can be through collaboration. So how are off-campus students collaborating with face-to-face -face students? How are face-to-face -face students collaborating with each other? And also uh, how are offline or off-campus students collaborating in that space as well? And that can happen in different delivery modes. Being it can be it can happen across campuses, and it can happen in face to face, uh, in the cloud, and as we like to term here in the faculty, in a blended learning um, arena. 
Then the next thing we look at is the action, the actions to actually instigate the plan that the unit chair is thinking about when rehancing their unit for blended learning. And what will this be needed? Like, what's the timeline? How, how quickly do they need the work done? Um, and how will we know that this has been achieved? So at Deakin University, we have a three trimester um, teaching load. So really, we're teaching around the clock. We also have intensive mode delivery of, of units as well. So timeline is really important, as well as not trying to bite off too much and concentrating on what's really essential for that particular unit or course to get them to where they need to be. Then another area which is really important in a blended learning approach for our faculty is evaluation. So we have student evaluations which use Evaluate, so we're able to look at this um, prior to enhancement, during enhancement and post enhancement, use student feedback, maybe that might be a qualitative or quantitative survey, um, but also seek peer evaluation from our colleagues to see what they're doing and how we're doing it and maybe how we can improve uh, what has already been done. And another area we look at in the blended learning model in the faculty is to communicate good practice with peers and beyond. Um, and that's just showcasing good examples and that can be either online or it can be face-to-face -face in professional development workshops. And there's also internal and external funding opportunities to help us um, you know, re-enhance re the unit again and evaluate again and uh, the cycle continues. So this cycle is circular because it never, it never really ends. We're constantly enhancing and improving the units based on this blended learning model. Um, and there's always areas to improve and some academics want to concentrate on a particular area. So I've also sectioned uh, what's the academic's responsibility and what's my responsibility and how we can work together in these two areas here. So for the academics, the context is really important. They need to be aware of how their unit sits in the course um, and the year levels bo and both um, you know, horizontally and vertically. They also need to be really aware of the boundary. So what is it that they can enhance, what they can't, and what are the priorities for the faculty? Um, another area that they need to be really on top of is um, the evaluation part of the process. With the areas where I come in or any particular blended learning lecturer who's supporting academics in STEM education can come in is in the planning to really make it um, clear where our faculty's priorities are and align those to what needs to actually achieve for an enhancement process. And this also filters into the action so we make sure that the timelines are, are realistic um, and how we can meet that and what it means to actually finish the job. And this area also, which is a, really is linked also to scholarship of learning and teaching, so how to evaluate, help the academics to evaluate their teaching and learning, because a lot of the academics are very keen to continue on their dis discipline specific knowledge and um, improving on that through their research. And teaching and learning isn't always a priority, sometimes it's a secondary, sometimes it's equal to that, and sometimes uh, in the blended learning framework we can actually help them uh, you know, start thinking about evaluating their teaching and learning and hopefully get a publication out of that so that, you know, they're killing two birds with one, stone, with one stone, so to speak. So to wrap up, this blended learning uh, framework was based on what was already occurring in our faculty, but also looking at where we needed to go in the future and bringing all those concepts together into this plan design. It was co-developed, so I spoke to a lot of other academics that were already using blended learning. I spoke to a lot of um, support people that were thinking in this space. Um, I, spoke, I spoke to a lot of people that were experts in the face-to-face -face arena but, and, and, also, and then those who were experts in the, um, you know, off offline, sorry, off online and the off-campus student experience and those who are actually trying to combine both. Um, so there was a lot of discussions and development around this process. So we really see this blended learning framework as a, a co-developed framework for our faculty based on set practice that's already occurring, but also where we want to improve and lead towards to the future to make sure all our courses and units have the option of having a blended learning approach for their students.